morning, everybody. Welcome to this Stalls TV Live Classroom. I'm Zach Ellsworth, and I'll be your host today, teaching you how to think like a CDO. When we came up with the class title, we a lot of people wondered what CDO stood for. I think you saw it there in the intro, but it is a Chief Decorating Officer. So the poll question that was launched to you before our class began was, do you struggle with choosing the right decorating technology for the job that your customer needs done? A vast majority of you answered yes. There can be a number of reasons why you struggle with that. It could be limits to your capacity. It could be limits with the type of equipment that you have or even the decorating technologies that you're familiar with. So today, the goal of our class is to teach you to think like a chief decorating officer, to be able to answer those questions that you struggle with currently with which way is the best way to decorate this particular job. And we'll talk about a lot of the different things that go into making that decision, a lot of the filters that we have to run through to where we're making the right decision. And sometimes the right decision for today's job might not be the right decision for the job two weeks from now for the exact same thing. And we'll talk about some of the reasons why that is. However, the goal of today's class is to be interactive. So I have some job scenarios that, that we've come up with, just some common things that we actually use here at Stalls in a lot of our sales training and training our salespeople to be able to help you decide what is right for your job. So we'll walk through a few of those scenarios, but I'll be reaching out to you to say what types of scenarios have you run into, what open jobs do you currently have, and how do you think we should decorate those uh, to accomplish uh, a couple of different things, which we'll kind of talk about what those filters are. So please feel free to begin chatting in what those sample job scenarios are for you. So if you have a job that's open right now that you're trying to decide how to decorate, chat it in and we will try and get to it and answer the question of which way is the right way to decorate so you can think like a chief decorating officer. We feel like the best way to teach you how to do that is to give examples and uh, walk through business. that. So we want to do two things in business, right? We want to maximize our profit and we want to minimize the risk that it takes to get there. If it's going to cost us all of our money to make a little bit of money, sometimes that's probably not the best decision for us. But if we can find a solution that allows us to invest maybe 10% of what we have and make a return of 20%, then that starts to be a good decision. So we want to maximize profit and we want to minimize risk. And that's really the two big decision filters that we're going to use as we walk through your job scenarios and some of the ones that we've come up with to say how do we maximize the profit on this job and how do we minimize the risk. So what is the risk? Is it a risk of losing all of our money? Is it a risk of losing a customer? Those are two of the big ones in the decorating business that, <clears throat> that we do. Maybe it's the risk of not getting good referrals or not having things done on time. Lots of risks can go into it but at the end of the day the big risk is failure. So we want to teach you how to think decorating wise to where you're not going to fail on any particular job. So let me tell you a story uh, about kind of the way that we're going to approach this. My uh, brother-in-law is actually a, uh, a research, a clinical research professor at the University of Pittsburgh. And that might not seem really relevant to what we're doing today, but I'll explain to you uh, why it is. So Anytime I have the opportunity to speak with him, I like to ask questions about the research that he's doing. I am uh, what I would call a gatherer of information. I just like to know things. Maybe you uh, do too. Hopefully you are. Uh, if not, you're not going to share the same interest in this type of story. But it's important to you as a business owner when you're choosing the right decorating technology to gather information. So I get to talk to him, ask him what research projects he's working on. He has done AIDS research at the University of Pittsburgh. He has done cancer research, which is what he's doing currently, uh, studying melanoma and how to, um, how to cure that, basically, is what his team is looking for, a cure for cancer at the University of Pittsburgh. But his real specialty through graduate school was vaccinations. And in learning more about how he develops vaccines, one of the interesting pieces of information that came out, at least I thought it was interesting, is depending on how a disease is introduced into your body, your body will respond differently. So if a disease is introduced through your nose, your body responds differently than if that same disease is introduced through your mouth. And that is the science of vaccines, where they put the vaccine, where the disease is coming in. They have to build vaccines to safeguard against any entry point 
into the body and cause your body to respond a particular way. So let's relate that to our jobs as chief decorators. Most of us are small business owners. Most of us are making the decisions as to how to decorate. So what kind of dictates our response as decorators to the best decorating technology? I'll throw out a few for you to think about. We have to think about garment type and construction. What fabric is it? Is it cotton? Is it polyester? Is it nylon? Is it some type of blend of those items? That is the first thing that kind of dictates where we can go decorating wise. If a garment is nylon, for instance, we're not going to want to choose a transfer or a decorating technology that's only good for cotton. We wouldn't be choosing a direct to garment print. If a garment is 100% cotton, then we're going to steer away from sublimation because sublimation is only good for 100% polyester. We'll get into some more of those details as we go. But that's one of the things that we need to consider that is going to dictate our response to how we actually decorate is the garment construction and the fabric type. Secondly, when we're starting to talk about actual orders, order quantity comes into play. We need to think, okay, is this one? Because we know, most of us know that screen printing isn't good for an order of one. Is this order 500? You're probably, for those of you who own vinyl cutters, aren't going to want to cut and weed 500 of the same small graphic that's going onto a left chest. You would consider some other decorating technologies. Again, we'll look at some specific examples to go through that and discuss some of the benefits, the advantages and disadvantages of each decorating technology. We'll find at the end of our session that all of the mainline decorating technologies are complementary in nature. One isn't necessarily better than the other overall, but one is better for a certain thing than the others. I think that's what you'll find by the end of our class. We also need to consider turnaround time. Why do we need to consider turnaround time when we're deciding how to decorate an order? Well, if it requires screen printing, or we think it requires screen printing, and we have to send that out to somebody because we don't have that capability, and their turnaround time is 10 days and our customer needs it in five, we're probably going to have to look for a different type of decorating technology that gives us a similar look and feel to screen printing but can get the job done in the amount of time required, assuming that the profit is built into our pricing and the job is worth it. All things to consider. Lastly, and sometimes most importantly, depending on who our customer is, we have to think about their desired finish. Maybe they don't want to be able to feel that graphic on the garment. Most of us know that sublimation actually becomes part of the garment when you apply it. So the desired finish can actually start to dictate the types of garments that we're asking our customer to choose. If they don't want to feel it on the shirt at all, we're not going to point them to a 100% cotton t-shirt with a piece of vinyl on it. We're going to point them towards a 100% polyester shirt that we're going to sublimate. Things like that. That's, that's where we are going today. So what I'd like to do is see if you guys have any sample jobs that you'd like to throw out first before I use the ones uh, that I have. So do any of you have any sample jobs that you'd like to submit or specific questions that you should ask in scenarios that you have now? All right, I think we have a couple of them coming in. We have Karen and Courtney helping us out today with uh, feeding the questions into me. So if we can start with our first scenario, and actually I'm going to take some notes depending on how detailed these scenarios are so we can kind of work through them step by step. So let's go ahead with the first scenario. Okay, the first scenario is from Laura. She has a customer that wants to do a shirt for a graduating class. It will have the outline of the number 16 on the back of the shirt. And the kids would like to have their autographs inside of the number on the back. It's a small class, so there will be approximately 10 shirts. The front of the shirt will be done with fashion film, and she's wondering what the best way to do the back design would be. Okay, great, great scenario, Laura. And this is one of the challenges that we probably all face uh, on a weekly or monthly basis as decorators. So we have a number or a name that's going to be on the front of the shirt in fashion film, and we want signatures in a number on the back of the shirt. I, I'm assuming, and I'm sorry if I missed it, that we're talking about a cotton or a 50-50 t-shirt here is the assumption uh, that I'm going to make. If you're putting fashion film on the front, just going to guess that that's the case. So how do we handle a job of 10 pieces? If you don't mind me asking, how many colors is the design that we're looking to put on the back of the shirt, Laura? If you don't mind chatting that into us, how many colors are we hoping that particular graphic to be? because that'll help make our decision as well. 
any response yet? OK. All right, let's assume, since we're putting fashion film on the front, that we're looking at a one or two color design. OK, I think we're looking at a one color design. So as soon as we hear 10 of the same, we think, OK, that could go CAD cut if we have a vinyl cutter and material. That could go somebody who has a CAD cutter to create those transfers for us. Um, or we could start looking at a process that is designed for more pieces. Ten really isn't a lot. However, our real challenge, I think as Laura pointed out, is the autographs that need to happen in those particular numbers or that graphic on the back. So autographs are going to be very difficult to cut and weed using the CAD cut process. As you know, we're taking a blade and cutting around vinyl through this vector graphic and we have to weed away all that excess and with an autograph we're going to have a lot of small pieces so vinyl cutting really isn't uh, an option for this particular shirt so where I would look is I would actually look at a screen printed transfer is it going to be expensive yes um, however there are screen print transfer companies out there like Transfer Express that actually have templated graphics with built designed specifically for these types of signatures that's actually a very popular look and feel. So for that particular design, I would be looking to Transfer Express for a screen printed transfer for 10 pieces. I believe their order quantity on templates that they have, you can order as little as five sheets and the sheet itself is 11 by 14 or 11 and a quarter by 14, which is about the size of the back graphic that you're going to need. So you're going to be into the second price level on a one color design from Transfer Express and you can actually go to their website um, which I'm going to ask uh, Courtney to switch us over to my computer here, and I'll just give you a quick look at that. I don't have that exact pricing pulled up, but you should be able to see on Transfer Express's website here. But basically, a one color design for 10 pieces is, if you supply your own artwork, going to be $9.32 per piece. So it's all about really pricing uh, the shirt, knowing what your cost is into it. Uh, and that's really just a product of you're not going to want to cut and weed those all those names. The other option that you could do if somebody has uh, somebody that you know has a print and cut machine and you could go with a two color design, you could print on a white material and print all of those names on the graphic or the numbers uh, that you're looking for. So we could take that option as well. And that pricing, you're looking at about 12 cents per square inch uh, for that particular uh, style. If you order from stalls, somebody local might be able to do that for you as well. All right, let's, uh, hopefully that answers your question. I'm going to recommend screen printed transfers for that particular uh, graphic. Reason being, we're talking cotton t-shirt, we're talking one color, we're talking fine detail, and um, we're talking a quantity of 10. So that's why we're going to go screen printed transfers for that particular garment. Let's take a look at scenario number two. What do we have for scenario number two? For scenario number two, Karen asks, um, she has a hand-drawn image with a ton of details in multiple words with letters to weed that the client wants to put on the back of 15 long sleeve black cotton shirts with the letters OCRA on the front left chest. It's a single color design, neon green, and she's currently leaning towards Transfer Express, but curious if there's another option that would be more cost effective. Okay, give me, I'm sorry, give me the early details again. I got the long sleeve, I got single color, I have a hand-drawn design. Hand-drawn image, multiple words with letters to weed, okay. back of 15 long sleeve black cotton shirts. 15. Got it. Okay. 15 black cotton shirts. Um, I think you're on the right track and this presents us a very similar option to the last scenario that we looked at. As soon as you get up into that 1015 now, Transfer Express pricing is going to get more inexpensive the more uh, items that you have to decorate. Reason being, the screen printing process has a pretty fixed cost in um, designing or making the screens that get ready and setting up the particular job to print. So the savings in screen printing is once that setup is done, you can achieve quantities of scale. So the more pieces that you get, you're really only adding ink and paper pricing to that. So you pay for the setup up front on the one, five, ten pieces, and then the pricing goes down uh, as you get higher. So 15 pieces is, is really a point where you have to kind of look at one or the other and say, 
Well, does it make more sense? So I would start thinking about turnaround time and how much your time is worth to you. So the Transfer Express transfer might not be less expensive material-wise than cutting that design yourself. When you're doing CAD cut, you're looking at a round, good estimate of a, of a standard vinyl of about a penny per square inch. So let's say you have a 10 by 10 design. You're looking at about a dollar in cost in CAD cut. If you go to Transfer Express and order a transfer, um, 15 of those in a one color, you're, you're looking at $6.55 for each transfer. So we have a difference for easy math of about $5 per print. Over 15, $75, right? Is my math correct on that? I think so. So you have a difference of $75 for the Transfer Express transfer versus cutting it yourself. But let's start to think and talk about weeding time. How much is your time worth to you? If you are doing the weeding, what else could you be doing? What's the opportunity cost that we're going to incur? If it's going to take us, let's just say, um, three hours uh, to weed that particular design, we're talking we have a $70 difference. If we value our time at $25 an hour, then it's about even. If we value our time at $50 an hour, then it's probably going to make more sense for us to order the transfer and be doing something else, selling our next job, while we wait for those transfers to come in. So it starts to become how much is your time worth to you, what other things are on your plate, how do we make the customer happy. The turnaround time is obviously going to be quicker if you already have the vinyl in stock and you can weed it away, but if it takes you all day to weed that particular graphic, then was it really, uh, was it really worth it? What else could you have been doing that day, making sales calls, closing additional sales to add profit to the bottom line? So. Both options, I would say, are viable. My personal opinion, if I am, the, if I am a one-man show and I'm doing all of the weeding, I'm going to order the transfers in that particular situation and spend the extra $70 to go out and sell another two or three jobs during the time that it's going to take that I would be weeding, spending time with the artwork, and applying those. So that's, that's my opinion on that particular job. You guys can feel free to chat in your opinions as well. And we will share those if there's uh, better options out there that, that you're aware of as well. We can share those as well. Any other scenarios coming in from our viewers? Let's take another one. Scenario is from Kristen. A customer sent her a photo that she wants her to put on a onesie with text underneath. Okay. One item with black and white photo and black text. Okay, photo on a onesie with text underneath. It's a black and white photo. Okay, which is probably, it's containing, um, even though it's black and white, it's containing half tones. Black and white photo, text underneath, I assume one color text, whether that's black or white to go with it. And, okay, black text, thank you. And we also have the fact that it is literally one piece. Okay. Really good scenario. Thanks, thanks for that, Kristen. Um, Photos are interesting. So when we think photo, obviously, unless we're going for a particular look, photo isn't going to lend itself to a cutting technology or a screen print technology that typically operates from a vector format. Most screen printers aren't going to print um, photos for you, most, especially on one piece. So screen printing is kind of out because we're looking at one piece. A screen printed transfer is out because we're looking at one piece. Um, when we look at a onesie, we have to start thinking stretch and rebound. Most of us who have, uh, have kids or have decorated onesies know that there's probably a little bit of spandex in that particular garment that gives it a little bit of stretch so the baby can stretch and move um, in that. So photo points us towards print technology. One color name underneath gives us the option to combine a print technology with a single color vector technology like vinyl cutting. So we have to start to think, do we have, one, the print technology available? Um, two, do we know somebody with the print technology available? What's our turnaround time? What type of quality do we really need to look at? So when we talk print technology, since this is a onesie, I'm guessing it's not 100% polyester. So sublimation is probably going to be out of the equation here, unless we're combining it with another material that is CAD cuttable, like Glitter Flake, to where you have a glitter photo. Maybe it's what the customer wants, maybe not, have to consider that. Um, or a twill. Probably don't want to put a big, thick photograph of twill 
on a baby onesie. So where I would look, what, I'm sorry, what color was the actual garment again? White or, was it white or black? We didn't get that? Okay, so that, that will actually help uh, make uh, a difference in the type of print transfer that we can choose. If it's a, it's a white, white onesie, great. So if it's a white onesie, we can start looking at print technologies that don't have a white base because the shirt itself is going to give us that see-through. So the most elementary and the shortest lasting technology that we can use on that is an inkjet paper that we can print off of our inkjet printer. Um, that is more for a novelty item. It's not going to really last in the wash the same way a solvent or eco-solvent printable transfer would or a sublimation transfer or some of the other digital print technologies that are out there, direct-to-garment printing. Um, so if you are looking for inexpensive, do it now, do it with our desktop printer, and it's more for a keepsake and not necessarily for the child to wear over and over again, we can look at inkjet paper to print on. So we can print that in the reverse and heat apply it and we're done. So I would start there, again, depending on the end purpose of the garment. If the baby's going to be wearing it and washing it a lot, because obviously you're going to wash baby clothes a lot, they get dirty, I would not go that direction. If it's a keepsake commemorative, I would look at inkjet transfer paper as the way to go. Um, next consideration, let's say that the baby is going to wear it, wash it. Uh, digital print technologies, you could go with a direct-to-garment print. If you have a direct-to-garment printer, that's an easy one if it's a 100% cotton shirt, even if it's a, an 80-20 onesie, something like that. Direct-to-garment printing would definitely be a way that I would look at. Your direct-to-garment print and your digital print for a solvent or eco-solvent printer is going to be about the same cost if you do it yourself. If you have the technology already in-house, either one of those is going to work for you. If you're sending it out for a digital transfer, you're starting to look more in the 7 to 12 cents per square inch range for that uh, particular transfer to put on the onesie. However, that transfer, if you use a Stahl's Tech material, is going to stretch, it's going to rebound, and it's going to last a lot longer than the other, uh, the, the other print technologies out there for full color graphics. So I would look direct to garment printer if you know somebody who has one or if you have one yourself, or I would look at digital print. If you have a print cut machine, or if you have that process set up, solvent eco solvent print cut, or um, you can order the transfers from a company like Transfer Express or for stalls who will do them for you for as little as one. Now it's gonna be an expensive one to send that out, uh, but if it's what your customer wants, it's what your customer wants. So commemorative inkjet transfer in use, a uh, print cut transfer or direct to garment printing is the way that I would go with that. Any other scenarios coming in? Scenario is okay. from Jessica. Okay, Jessica. She has a customer that wants a two color logo on okay. the left chest of 27 cotton poly blend shirts of various colors. Okay. Two color logo, left chest, 27 cotton poly um, shirts of various different colors. Do you think, we'll talk about it. I'm not going to ask you yet. Let's talk through it. Um, so cotton poly pretty much opens us up to almost any um, decorating technology. 27 pieces gives us the ability to start looking at screen print technologies, whether that's a screen print transfer or we contract the job out. Um, 27 is probably not quite enough to really make sense to send out to your local screen printer unless you're doing screen printing in-house. You would definitely look at that. We do have to talk a little bit about the level of detail that is in your particular design. Are we talking a text design with very fine detail, small text? Are we talking kind of like a crest that would be on the left chest? That would open up, if, if it's not a huge level of fine detail, that opens up CAD cutting to us for this two color design if we have a vinyl cutter and vinyl. Did we get um, design type? It is text with a state outline and paw prints. Okay, text with a state outline and paw prints. I'm going to guess that it is CAD cuttable if, you, if you're willing to invest the time in it for a two color. However, when we look at a two color for CAD cut, again, do we have operators that are already running a cutter all day that are going to do this? Or are we taking our selling and marketing time away by standing in front of the cutter, preparing the artwork, weeding out two colors, 
or cutting two colors, weeding out two colors, and pressing two colors. That's, that's more of a where's the risk and where's the, the reward from our time. So if you have operators that are standing in front of a cutter all the time, I'd look at CAD cut for that particular job because you're talking a penny per square inch times two colors. So your two cents per square inch on, let's just say it's a three by five design, cost you about 30 cents per print plus the labor that you're paying your folks to run the machine. Um, the other option to look at would be a screen printed transfer. A screen printed transfer is probably for that particular size, actually a digital transfer could turn out uh, about the same price as a screen printed transfer because your digital transfer from stalls, again, is going to be about seven, eight cents per square inch for that particular quantity. So um, even for easy math, let's make it 10 cents per square inch. It's going to cost you a buck fifty to digitally print that. To do transfers, you're probably looking at um, it's nine dollars a sheet for that particular design. However, you're going to be able to fit multiple items on that sheet, so your your pricing is going to be close to the same. So I would look at CAD prints digital transfer for that particular design, or a Transfer Express two color transfer for that design, if you don't have labor in-house that's already dedicated to cutting and weeding those designs. Now, would I choose to cut and weed it if my turnaround was 24 hours to 48 hours? Yes, because those transfers aren't going to make it to me. That's pushing out. If my garments are in-house and I'm ready to decorate and my customer needs it tomorrow, I'm cutting, weeding, and applying that design, even if it is my time to make the customer happy. If I have a week or two to get that done, I'm going to order out transfers and just lock down the heat press rather than going through the other labor. Any other scenarios coming in? From Stacy. Okay. She's doing some EMS shirts. Okay, Stacy doing EMS shirts. Yes, and she would like to know the best vinyl for Peak. Okay, best vinyl. And I assume this is a Piquet Polo that we're talking about. Is it a performance Piquet or is it a cotton? Piquet, because they do now have, I know Sanmar has some per performance piquet knits as well, because the cotton versus the polyester is going to make a difference for us. What is our fabric content on that? And how many colors are in our design? The reason I'm asking, if we're not looking for, I, I hear it's an EMS shirt, if I'm looking for reflective properties, I'm going to go with the 3M cuttable reflective, which is going to work on both the polyester or the cotton. Uh, we have some more details coming in. Cotton, one color. Okay, one cotton, or I'm sorry, one cotton. That's awesome. One color, cotton polo, piquet. Got it. So that particular um, knit ha it has very high ridges and low dips. So it is a more difficult item to heat print to because you start to see that texture in your vinyl. Is that a desired look? Uh, if it is, then you probably want to choose a thinner vinyl to apply to that, like fashion film is, is where I would look. If you don't want that, um, those peaks and valleys to show through and you just want a very flat surface, you're going to start looking at products like thermofilm, which is a thicker and will block some of that. So reflective finish, I would go with 3M reflective. If you want the peaks and valleys to show through your vinyl, I would look at fashion film. If you don't want them to show, I would go with thermofilm, all good for cotton shirts, all vinyl options that you can cut there uh, at home or at your store. All right, other scenarios coming in? Matt, Matt wants to know if there is a way to put a full color print, such as a photo, mm -hmm. on a cotton or 50-50 shirt without doing CAD cuts so that it feels like a screen print um, without the option to get into DTG? Really good question, Matt. So we want a photo on a cotton or 50-50 shirt, and we don't want to get into direct-to-garment printing, and we want a screen print finish. I don't think it exists, Matt. Unfortunately, right now, um, the, the way to go on that 50-50 or cotton to get a screen print finish for a photo in low quantities is direct-to-garment printing. That is really the alternative. Um, you can go with some type of printable vinyl, but it is not going to be the same finish as your direct-to-garment or screen print finish is going to be. You will, the, the discerning uh, eye of a decorator is going to know 
the difference. Now, your customer might not know the difference, but there's really no great uh, ink option for cotton that isn't direct to garment or screen print to get that true screen print finish. The other option, you can start looking at folks who print a four color process transfer. So it'll be close to screen printing, but it's not gonna be good for one because it is a screen printing process. So a lot of folks out there, including Transfer Express, they're launching a product here uh, in December. It's called Stretch Litho. So it is a litho print, which you can get full color photo finishes on with a screen print back. So you get the screen print feel um, on that particular product but not gonna be good for the low quantity runs. Gonna be very pricey, low quantity. Starts to make sense in those screen printing quantities, 24, 48, and up for pieces. Hope that answers your question. What else do we have? And I wanna thank you guys before she reads that for, uh, for the participation on uh, these different scenarios. It's very helpful to actually answer the questions that you have instead of uh, taking what I think your problems are and trying to solve them. So it's extremely helpful. Thank you for the questions. All right, let's take a look at the next scenario if we have one. A question from Karen. Okay. She wants to know ultimately what consideration should she keep in mind when designing an original item that could possibly generate multiple future orders? Okay. What consideration should you have when designing an item that could generate multiple future orders? That's a really good question because um, one of the reasons that screen printers invest in direct-to-garment print technology is because they have one really large order and they always have somebody come back and say, can I get three more of that or can I get one more of that? And screen printing, if you're not saving your screens, which a lot of screen printers just don't have the space or the ability to do that, it costs money it costs the same to set up for that 500 run as it does to set up for that one piece run. So if consistency in finish is important um, on that particular design where your customer wants the same color, the same everything, you should start designing for a process that you have in house, that you have control over, that you can duplicate and repeat over and over again. So if you have vinyl cutting technology in house, or if you order all of your transfers from a specific place, design around what their parameters are. Um, so vinyl cutting, you're talking one and two color designs that you're really gonna look at and you can stock your vinyl and you can cut it on demand and only cut what you need and decorate what your customers are ordering on an on-demand basis. Screen printed transfers, the beauty of a screen printed transfer is it's just ink and paper once you place the order. So if you know that you have a design that your customer is going to come back and order every two, three months or whatever uh, frequency that they're actually going to order at, then you can order additional screen printed transfers if the design's not going to change. So you can design within the parameters of a company like Transfer Express, order, if your order's for 24 pieces, you can order 50. You're really only paying for that ink and paper and you're not committing a garment to it. So not only do you have additional inventory, but you can put it on additional items. So maybe they ordered shirts, they come back and order bags. As long as the print area is similar, you have those transfers already on hand that you can decorate. So the best way to design is a production process that you can control in-house. If you have nothing in-house besides a heat press, look at screen print transfer technology for both the one and two color designs and your full color designs and just order a few extra to keep on hand. Uh, it'll save you some money down the road and make each print less expensive. That's the direction that I would look. Hope that answers your question. Other questions or scenarios that we have? Not at this time. Not at this time? Okay, great. We're actually about five minutes from uh, wrapping up our class. So let me just grab on my computer. I know you guys can't see it at the moment, but I'll give you one of the scenarios that we came up with here that usually presents um, some problems. So we had a three color piece of artwork. It was red, royal, and white. Our artwork came in, we had it in vector format. So it wasn't a raster image, it wasn't a picture, but a vector format image. We were looking for 26 pieces uh, for this particular job. The design was about six inches by nine inches. And we were going to a 50-50 shirt that was navy. So 
The training that we do here at Stalls is we, uh, we take all those items, put them through our deci decision filters where let's find out what's most important to the customer. If the finish is most important, it's, it's going to send us a certain way. Or if the type of shirt is most important, it's going to send us a certain way. And then the quantity can help dictate which technology we want. And then we start to consider what our opportunity costs are. What can we be doing while somebody else does this for us? Or do I need to do the whole job? Am I the only option that I have? So what we came up with for this three color design, normally we would think three color, 27 pieces, screen printed transfer. That's our immediate first look on a 50-50 t-shirt. However, when we dug into the pricing, based on the size of the design at six inches by nine inches, our pricing actually made more sense to send this to stalls to get a digital transfer back um, made of our CAD prints express print material. It came out a little bit less expensive. We can get the three colors that we want, and we didn't necessarily need a screen print feel. So for that particular design, we actually ended up going the digital route with a CAD print transfer. Now that could change as new technologies come out or based on different technologies that we have in house. If I have a direct to garment printer or a print and cut machine in house, I would start to compare those two. My finished cost on each one is about the same. It's about two cents per square inch based on the cost of the material and the mask for your print and cut or based on the cost of your pre-treatment and the ink that you're gonna use uh, on a direct to garment printer. So then it comes down to do I want to set up these 26 pieces to print and cut on my machine and walk away? Or do I want to load each shirt onto the heat press, pre-treat it, load each shirt onto the direct-to-garment printer, print it, take each shirt off and load it onto the heat press and cure the ink? Or do I want to come back and cut and weed, weed away the excess and mask my designs? We thought in our production that it would be faster to actually do a print and cut on this particular design. And since it's a 50-50, the print and cut was going to give us a better print quality than the direct garment because direct garment really looks best on 100% ring spun cotton. So that's just another example of how these technologies can complement each other and the choice today might not be the choice tomorrow depending on the capabilities that we have in-house and the technology that's out there. Do we have any other questions or scenarios coming in? A couple of general questions. Okay, a couple general questions. We will answer those and then we will wrap up our time together. The first uh, asks, can you apply glitter flake vinyl over a DTG design? The question is, can you apply glitter flake vinyl over a DTG design? That's a really good question. And I'll say the answer is yes and no. Here's, here's why. If you can have your design to where the glitter flake is not only on top of ink in pre-treat, then yes. If you can get the glitter flake to portions of the garment, to, because the adhesive that's on the back of it is really designed to uh, adhere to cotton and polyester, not to direct to garment ink. So if you can get portions of your design, large portions of your glitter flake design to uh, actually make contact with the garment and not just put it over a DTG print, then yes. If you're just putting it on a stack of direct -to garment ink with white as your base layer and the CMYK on top, it's probably, it will stick temporarily, but it's not gonna last as long um, through the wash as it would if you could make it, make it make contact with the garment. So yes and no on that, and that's the, the caveat there. Next question, please. Send a design transfer to Transfer Express, mm -hmm. and it would be less expensive for CAD prints, like you said in the scenario before, mm -hmm. will they tell you that it would be less expensive? You know, that's a really good question. I want to say that the answer on that is yes. Um, however, I would encourage you to ask <laughs> uh, when you call because um, Transfer Express is a growing company, Stalls is a growing company, and while we do our best to train all of our employees out of the gate the first day they hit that phone to know what the best printing technology is, not everybody is up to the same speed, just as decorators across the country aren't. So definitely ask, um, and ask for an explanation. Don't be afraid to ask for an explanation. Say which one is best and why. If they don't have the why to back it up, talk to somebody who does. Feel free to shoot us an email or ask for somebody else uh, on the phone that can explain the why to you. So I want to say that yes, they will tell you. 
the best uh, as long as they have all the information available to them. The reality is definitely ask those questions when you call in. They do mean well and they do want to make the best recommendation for you. It's just a matter of what point in their decorating, uh, thinking like a chief decorating officer they are at. So yes, but ask. Any other questions? few more questions rolling in here. Okay. Um, is it appropriate to tell a customer what types of decoration you do in-house versus out-of-house to avoid the customer feeling like there's something you can't do just because you don't do it in-house? Okay. Um, the question is basically at what level do we communicate with our customers about our capabilities? Do we tell them what we do here and what we, what we send out? Um, I'm going to say it depends on the customer. However, I probably just my personal opinion, unless I have it all under one roof and, I, and it's a selling point that I have it all under one roof, I'm not going to tell my customers what I do in the back uh, versus what I actually send out to somebody else down the street that, that helps us out. Um, unless it turns into a selling point in the conversation that build, builds credibility with your customer to say, no, I do all of this, then I, I personally would avoid the conversation. Um, about what's done in-house and what is done out of house. Just that we can do it for you. You bring it to us, we can decorate it. And then it's our job to figure out the best way to do that that makes the most sense for their turnaround time, their desired finish, and their desired pricing. So I would avoid that personally. Any other questions? The next question is how can you do small letters on poly without any outer border around them? Okay. The question is, how do you do small letters on polyester without any outer border around them? One, depending on the quantity that you're going to be ordering, uh, screen printed transfers work on polyester if you use the ElastiPrints formula from Transfer Express. It's designed to go on at a very low temperature, 275 degrees, to avoid scorching on your polyester so you don't get the burn marks, you don't get the um, dye migration that is prevalent in 100% uh, polyester decorating. So you can use a screen printed transfer using the right formula, ElastiPrints. You can also do CAD cut and you wouldn't have a border around it as well, depending on how small the letter is obviously. If you're doing the CAD cut in-house, you can actually achieve a much smaller letter than what most places will cut for you. And the reason they won't cut those small letters for you isn't because it isn't possible, but it's the amount of time that's actually involved in weeding that. So if you're willing to commit the time uh, to weeding, use a material with a very sticky carrier like fashion film to achieve those fine details, uh, but you can do that with CAD cut as well. Um, probably would avoid print and cut. You could also probably achieve that through a direct to garment print as well. Again, kind of depending on how small is small, you might lose some of the inside cavities if you have a very small A or an E uh, or something like that. But I would look at screen printed transfers and I would look at CAD cut as your best options to do that on a polyester, just using the right formula material. Other questions, we'll take, uh, we'll actually take one more because we're just about out of time. So give us one more there. And then if you've chatted questions in and I don't get to them, we will pull these questions up after the session and give you a call or shoot you an email with the answers to them. So you won't be without an answer to your question, but we'll answer one more on air here. Final question for today, can you use a DTG printer in the same environment as a sublimation printer because of sublimation needing drier climates and DTG needing more humidity in a smaller room? Okay, good question. Can you put a DTG and a sublimation printer in the same room? Uh, I'm going to say it, it, I know I'm saying it depends a lot because it does, uh, but it depends on the sublimation printer. So if you're using a desktop sublimation printer like the Sawgrass Virtuoso printer that Stahls recently started selling, yes, you can use them in the same room. It has a very high tolerance for uh, the different climates. The desktop model Sawgrass Virtuoso does. If you're using a wide format sublimation printer, um, I would probably recommend separating those technologies to keep the environment um, correct. The larger the format, the more room there is for error, the more room there is for air to get in the print heads affect everything that you're doing. So if you're talking wide or large format sublimation and direct to garment, I would separate. If you're desktop sublimation and you choose the sawgrass system, you can keep them in the same room and be just fine. So uh, I know we didn't get to all your questions. Uh, we will answer those shortly after the session. You'll receive an email or a phone call with answers to the questions that you chatted in. Really uh, appreciate your participation today. 
in our session. Hopefully we've been able to uh, give you some ideas and the right filters on how to think like a chief decorating officer and choosing the right technology for the job. If you have more scenarios, email them to us. We'll get back to you. We want you to make the most amount of money that you can on every single job. So I'm Zach Ellsworth. Thanks for watching.